Hello, and welcome to another helpful video from Consolidated Sterilizer Systems. My name is Scott, and today we're going to talk about how to test the steam quality feeding an autoclave. Let's first discuss the importance of steam quality. Like time, temperature, and pressure, steam is a critical variable in the success and repeatability of the sterilization process. Steam quality is the measurable physical aspects of steam used for sterilization. These include temperature, dryness, and non-condensable gas content. Deviations from established ranges of these aspects can result in sterilization indicator failures, staining, and corrosion of instruments and containers. Let's get started. When you test the steam quality, you're measuring three important parameters, steam dryness, non-condensable gases, and superheat. Let's quickly review each one. Steam dryness is calculated by measuring the temperature change in a known amount of water in relation to the mass of steam that is required to cause that temperature change. Because the dryness value of the steam at the chamber entry point can be a bit lower than the dryness value in the sterilizer, measurements of steam dryness should be made at both locations. The acceptance criterion for steam dryness is at least 95% by weight, and almost every sterilizer manufacturer recommends 97% pure steam. In reality, a dryness level as low as 90% is considered acceptable for laboratory autoclaves. The good news is that most host steam boilers can deliver this level of steam to the autoclaves located in the facility. Steam dryness values below 90%, however, are considered to be wet steam, which does not deliver as much energy to the load. Now let's turn to non-condensable gases. This typically refers to air, which is a poor sterilant compared to steam. Non-condensable gases decrease sterilization efficacy. As with wet steam, the sterility assurance level will be less than expected if non-condensable gas content is greater than 3.5% by volume. Non-condensable gases are brought into the steam primarily via two sources, leaks or cracks in the steam plumbing, filters, separators, etc., or inadequate deaeration of the boiler feed water. Last but not least, superheat. In superheat, the steam is too dry and its energy content is too high. When the steam condenses on the load, the energy released is enough to melt plastic packaging and actually char paper packaging. Neither is a good outcome. As previously mentioned, if the moisture content is higher than saturation for temperature, wet loads can occur. When the moisture content is lower than saturation for the temperature, the condition is called superheat. The amount of superheat present in the steam should be no more than 25 degrees Kelvin, which is 25 degrees Celsius, above the temperature in free expansion into atmosphere at the current atmospheric pressure. The temperature shown on the sterilizer controls generally will not show superheat values, even if superheat is present. Since the temperature is measured in the drain of the sterilizer, superheat will have been dissipated into the load, chamber wall, door, and backhead long before it reaches the sensor. The first step is to measure even if there are no problems. This should be done on a regular basis, at initial installation and after preventative maintenance to establish a baseline for the system. Measurements made when there are no problems can also provide an indication if the sterilizer is close to having a problem. Measurements should also be made when changes are made to supply plumbing. Here are some items that can cause poor steam quality. Overall bad system design. Inadequate insulation around the sterilizer or steam piping, allowing energy loss and condensation. Poorly controlled steam boiler chemistry. Low sections of piping between the boiler and the sterilizer, having no steam traps or separators. Clogged steam traps or separators. Steam trap or filter too far from the sterilizer, allowing the condensate to be generated between the trap or filter and the sterilizer. Those who have experience in steam quality analysis can usually make cost-effective suggestions to fix the problems, and of course, measure to see if the problem is in fact fixed. Low-cost solutions may include things like steam filters, steam traps with drip legs on the incoming line, or better insulation on the incoming steam lines. You can keep things running smoothly by making steam quality testing part of your preventative maintenance process. If you have any questions, talk to a sterilization specialist at Consolidated Sterilizer Systems today.